Hello everyone, welcome back to the studio. My name is Cody, and in today's short video, I will be showing you how I create this beautiful fall landscape in oils. And I will also be sharing with you how you can create depth within your landscape paintings, as well as how you don't need to add every little detail to make a painting look realistic. But before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell to get notified every time a new video comes out. So, with all that said, let's get started. I apologize for skipping ahead a little bit as I forgot to click record on the camera when I first started the painting. But anyway, I have established the sky using a mixture of ultramarine blue, titanium white, and cobalt teal. Now I've added much more titanium white into the mix along the horizon line as I want to make sure that these mountains appear that they are several miles away. One of my favorite brushes to use for creating a nice painterly effect are these short flats from Rosemary & Co. And you can find those brushes in a link in the description below. For those distant mountains, I mixed ultramarine blue, titanium white, and a hint of burnt umber to desaturate. If I just mixed ultramarine blue and titanium white, those mountains would come way too far forward. So by adding that hint of burnt umber, it automatically makes those mountains appear much further away. Now it's absolutely vital that we keep the shadows in the foreground considerably darker than the ones in the middle ground or the background. So you may not notice, but the green in the immediate foreground is just a couple shades darker than those trees in the middle ground. And the darkest green I can mix is ultramarine blue and phthalo green. And for a list of all the colors I'm using in this painting, that link is in the description below. So even though those trees may not seem like they're that far away, I do mix a little bit of titanium white into that phthalo green and ultramarine mix just to make it so they appear like they are further from us than those weeds in the foreground. To create these highlighted areas in the trees, I'm mixing ultramarine blue, phthalo green, a little bit of cadmium lemon, and yellow ochre. And since phthalo green is such a strong green, I always mix yellow ochre into the mix because that creates a little bit more of a browner effect, and you can even add burnt umber to the mix so that green doesn't appear too strong. Another great brush to use for creating texture and foliage is the Tish Dagger Brush, and this brush is also linked in the description as well. One thing you really want to watch out for while painting distant mountains is to never have hard edges. So when you have established the mountains, go back with a very soft brush and just lightly blend the edges. Even with the pine trees right behind those aspen, I still wanted to blend the edges and the tops to give the effect that they are behind those bigger set of trees in the middle ground. I pull out a small round brush just to give a bit more randomness to these colorful willow bushes. And all I'm trying to do in these areas is to suggest an area where there would be a lot of detail with just a few simple brush strokes. And I also thought it would be a cool idea to add an old barn hiding behind that willow bush. Still using that small round brush, I add the highlighted areas from the trees and the reflections, and I'll come back with a soft brush to blend these out. I start adding the darkest darks using this evergreen extra long flat. And this may almost look black, but I have mixed a little bit of titanium white into the mix, so I'm saving that total dark to almost black for the immediate foreground. To make this reflection in the tree actually look like a reflection, I use an ivory dagger to add some ripples in the water. I'm using that short flat brush once again to establish these blue shadows in the rocks. It's important to note that while painting blue shadows and rocks, that the blue of those rocks are not going to be nearly as blue as the sky, so I do mix a little bit of burnt umber into the mix to desaturate once again. And with a few last marks with that ivory dagger, I think I'm ready to call this painting finished.
Well, that about wraps up this week's video, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Now, as always, you can find me on my website at CodyOldham.com. And while you're over there, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter where you get weekly and monthly updates on what's going on here in the studio. And you can also find me on Instagram at Cody Oldham Artist. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.